Hello. Did you know the most important part of a farmer's job is planning? We must be completely on top of the operations at a farm to run a successful, productive and efficient farm. So as we get into the new season, it's important to start planning way ahead as to what you want to grow. I've been doing that for a couple of months already as we get into the winter season or the rabi season. So I wanted to share through this video some of these learnings that I have gathered on how to plan for your crops uh, and uh, this might be useful for you if you're planning to grow something uh, in a farm uh, in your kitchen garden or even in your balcony. So we start off by making a list of what all it is that we want to grow and in what quantities do we want to grow it. So when you're talking about crops, uh, you know, the quantities can be quite large. Basis, uh, how much you want to sell uh, or if you're growing a crop for an animal, then how much of that crop the animal is likely to consume. Uh, or if you want to just grow it for your own consumption, what is it that you would want uh, to have for your own consumption? Sometimes what you need for your own consumption is such a small quantity that it's almost impossible to grow it. So you might end up growing something which is slightly bigger quantity than uh, what you need for yourself, but that's okay because you can always sell the surplus. So as I started work on the winter harvesting, I actually made a list of things that I wanted to grow. Starting from the outside of our farm, which is where we have the large fields, uh, you know, I had to list out what all do I want to do in fields and what do I want in large quantities. So the things that I want in large quantities was mustard uh, because uh, we want to make mustard oil. Uh, we believe that um, it's something that we can sell, uh, but also something that uh, we use in large quantities because we do all our cooking in it. We do all our pickling in it. We make our chutneys with it. Uh, and it's something that's in um, good demand uh, within our friends and family circle at all times. We also want to grow wheat, uh, but we don't want to grow so much wheat for ourselves uh, because we don't like to consume too much wheat. But we do have dogs uh, for whom we make rotis every day. So we back calculated to see how much uh, atta do we need to feed our dogs for the rest of the year. And we're going to grow all that wheat and uh, store it so that we're able to feed our dogs. Uh, secondly, the straw that comes from the wheat, what we call puri, is uh, chopped up and uh, stored to feed to the cows. So that's another thing that we've calculated and seen how much we need to feed to them. Third crop that we plant in the winters is sugarcane. Uh, we've always had sugarcane on the farm, but we are going to be relocating it from where we've been growing to a newer area. And we also want to grow more of it than what we have grown in the past. So we are going to be relocating that to a new piece of land and planting that. But that planting happens a little bit late in the season. Uh, we'll also be planting a lot of legumes and pulses like kala chana, safed chana, uh, which is chickpea, uh, rajma, kidney beans, and uh, masoor dal, which is lentils. So these are all the dals that we'll be growing in the winter season for our own consumption as well as to sell. Uh, and we've identified the areas where we would want to plant this. Uh, other than that, uh, potatoes is also a big crop in the winter, uh, which is already been sowed by us. Uh, we've planted about 60 kilos of potatoes and we should be getting anything between 500 to 600 kilos. And uh, finally, we grow uh, things like uh, onions, which will be planted much later uh, in the winter. So that's a late winter uh, sowing. And all minor crops, you know, little things like ajwain, sov, suwa, kalonji, a lot of these small ingredients or minor ingredients is also something that we would like to grow uh, because we use these to uh, make our pickles and chutneys and things like that. And we like to have uh, everything that we consume growing at Ananda itself. We'll also be growing something called Bersin, which is like a clover, which we grow as a green fodder for our cows. So that's the major crops. Then it's uh, then we have to talk about the vegetables. So what kind of vegetables are, do you want to grow? So I've actually segregated them between the traditional vegetables which we grow in the winter, like cauliflower, radish, carrot, beetroot, turnip, um, methi, palak, uh, sarso, uh, you know, um, uh, capsicum, tomatoes, uh, butter, beans. Uh, these are things that we grow normally, but I'm also trying to grow some things which are slightly more exotic this time. Uh, so like zucchini or artichokes or asparagus, uh, and also increase my um, repertoire of uh, herbs to include things like thyme, sage, uh, oregano, 
uh, parsley, celery, you know, and being quite ambitious and trying to plant all of these as well. So when you are introducing new uh, plants in your garden, you have to study about them. You have to learn and experiment uh, to see when they are germinating. Do you think the temperature is right? Is the season correct? Uh, and then take copious notes because next time you'll have to refer to them to remember that uh, when you sowed it in October, it didn't germinate, but it started germinating in the first week of November. So you know those kind of things one has to learn and experiment every time you introduce a new crop. And the last thing in my list would be flowers. Uh, often uh, sort of ignored and neglected by farmers, but it's good to have a bunch of flowers uh, which you would want to plant on the farm. Flowers can become quite expensive to plant on a farm because you know the area is so wide. So what I tend to do is I've sort of made my own seed over time uh, and started off with uh, smaller quantities and then kept saving seed and multiplying that. Uh, sometimes I've also picked up flowers which had formed seed from street sites, from uh, public gardens uh, and things like that. I've often sent my children on missions to go and get some some of the dried nasturtiums you know, from that nearby park because uh, they'll have seeds in them and I'll be able to store them for future growth. So that's really how I've collected a lot of my flowers. Uh, but when in doubt, plant uh, marigold. Uh, you know, it's easy to plant, uh, easy to seed save. Uh, it's very hardy, very fast growing and it's a great trap plant to actually trap all uh, the pests which might come into your garden. So once you've made a list of things that you want to plant, the second thing is to check whether you have seed. That's really important and this should be done well in advance. So uh, I start uh, planning for the next season. The minute we've finished actually planting everything of the prior season and we know everything is already in the ground, uh, doing well, I already start thinking about the next season and saying, okay, now what next? Do I have the seed? Sometimes I have to get in touch with other organic farmers from whom I buy seed or swap seed sometimes. Uh, or otherwise, I actually, um, you know, go to some online sites to buy seeds from them, uh, especially things like uh, vegetable seeds, etc. Uh, for crops, we mostly save our own seeds. So we don't need to go out and buy, for example, Kala Chana, Safed Chana, Rajma, Sarso, Gehu, all of this, we already have seed. We will not be buying seed for any of these uh, in the coming season. Uh, it's also important uh, to uh, know how much seed you need in terms of quantity, uh, especially for large crops. You should know whether you need one kilo, two kilos or five kilos of seed because you don't want to run short of it uh, later. And uh, it's again simple, um, uh, easily available information. Uh, in fact, I'm going to try to put it out on our blogs on uh, ananda.com as well where you'll be able to read and find some of this information that how much seeds do you need for one acre of moong dal or how, how much seed do you need for one acre of wheat, etc. Uh, that should help you to plan your seed purchases uh, better as well. Now, when you're deciding what to plant where, you have to look at a few conditions. You have to look at uh, irrigation and watering and seeing whether you'll be able to get enough water. Uh, is, does that crop need water or does it not need water? What kind of soil is this likely to grow in easily, etc. So when we review our land and we look at what kind of soil or microclimate or environment we have there, we then choose which kind of crop will do well there. So Chana, for example, doesn't need too much water. And we've cut some new areas uh, in the forest uh, where we are now going to plant Chana because it will do perfectly well there. Uh, sugarcane, on the other hand, will need watering. So we have uh, found a very low-lying place for sugarcane where water naturally accumulates during the monsoon and uh, that should benefit the sugarcane. So, you know, taking decisions like that is important when you're doing your planning. Typically, people tend to plant uh, large quantities of uh, seed on a single day. Let's say if you're planting wheat or even chana or masoor, you know, the conventional wisdom is that one day we'll run the tractor and we'll plant everything. What I found is that that becomes very uh, challenging from a harvesting perspective because everything harvests on one day. And if you are not uh, using machines to harvest, uh, you are dependent on uh, human labor to do that. Then it becomes tricky because you don't have that much manpower. And uh, as you know that Ananda, at Ananda, we do not like to take temporary labor. We work with our fixed set of uh, people. So I like to stagger my planting. I like to plant uh, chana over a month, keep planting every week, plant somewhere so that it then also ripens in a staggered manner. 
and I can harvest it far more easily. Uh, I would say follow the same process even for vegetables. Uh, many times we tend to plant vegetables on a single day and then what we get is a lot of vegetables on that one particular day but nothing after or before. But with vegetables we want to have a continuous stream of produce. So if the sowing season for let's say radish or carrot or cauliflower is over a six week period, I recommend that you plant some seed every week. So that way I know that I'll keep getting cauliflower or radish or carrot or whatever it may be over a staggered period of time. Similarly for mutter or you know beans or tomatoes, there is a constant uh, nursery which is always in motion so that we have plants of various life stages uh, at Ananda at all points in time. Once you've started planting things, then it's very important to have like an operational file like this. Uh, this is a place where I actually keep track of what should be the, um, you know, schedule for uh, uh, watering, what should be the schedule for fertilizing, what should be the schedule for any sprays of Jeevamrit that you need to do. So I've converted into small formats, uh, which are actually all in Hindi so that the farmer can understand them as well. Uh, and it includes things like which date we planted it, what was the seed quantity, uh, which day uh, did we water it, how many times have we uh, put uh, jihamit on it, and any learnings that we had from this crop um, in the course of the uh, crop cycle. So this is, it, it's important to get this paperwork uh, up front, print these out, keep them ready, uh, so that people can actually, uh, you know, you can actually start filling it up uh, as the crop uh, progresses. So that's really uh, what all goes into the planning uh, and now it's time for me to get back to uh, my daily ops uh, where I keep track of uh, you know what I did yesterday um, or what the team has been doing uh, when we put things into the ground, uh, what's uh, ready to be a sprayed regime Amrit now or where do we need to water or where we need to put some fertilizer. So I'm back getting back to my daily ops. Uh, thanks for watching this. I hope you found it useful. If you have any uh, comments or any uh, questions, do drop them in the comments box and we will try to answer uh, more of your queries and questions in some subsequent videos. Uh, I make a lot of these videos in English. Uh, I'm trying to uh, encourage uh, more um, city people uh, to take on the task of growing their own food, uh, you know, investing in food production and uh, reconnecting with nature. Uh, I think if uh, each one of us does this, the planet will be greener, better, more productive. And more importantly, our uh, future generations will have better quality, nutrient-rich food to eat. And uh, we will be a better race than what we are today. Thanks for watching. Bye.